deploying a Flask application using Heroku. In this course, you'll create a Python Flask example application and deploy it using Heroku, making it publicly available on the web. Heroku removes much of the infrastructure burden related to building and running web applications, allowing you to focus on creating an awesome app. Besides deploying the app, you'll use Git to track changes to the code, and you'll also configure a deployment workflow with different environments for staging and production. Using this setup, you'll be able to test and preview the app before releasing it. In this course, you'll learn how to create a Python Flask example web application, deploy the web application using Heroku, implement a deployment workflow using Heroku pipelines, and manage configuration and secrets for different environments in a secure way. As you'll learn through this course, by combining Flask and Heroku, you can minimize the effort required to create and run web applications. So now you know what's going to be covered, let's get started. Creating the Flask application. In this section, you'll learn how to create a Python Flask example application and run it locally. You're going to initialize the project, install Flask, create the application and run it on your computer. You'll also learn how to use Git to version your application's code. The project initialization consists of creating a directory for your application, setting up a Python virtual environment where dependencies will be installed, and initializing the Git repository. You don't have to use a virtual environment or Git for local development, but they are very convenient and will make development and deployment to Heroku simpler. For more on virtual environments, check out this RealPython course. Start by creating a new directory for the Python Flask example app. You can do it by running these commands seen on screen. Here you create a real Python Flask app folder and then change the current working directory to that folder. Next, you'll create a Python virtual environment. Using a virtual environment allows you to manage your project's dependencies without messing with system level files shared by all applications. You'll see the commands needed to create and activate a virtual environment. The first line works on all platforms. The command needed to activate the virtual environment depends on the platform that you're on. Here's the command for macOS and Linux. And here's the command for Windows. These commands create a virtual environment named vnv and activate it so packages will be loaded and installed from this environment instead of using the system level packages. The next step is to install Flask. You can run the following command to install Flask using pip. This installs Flask version 2.0.3, the version you'll be using throughout this course. Next, you need to create a requirements.txt file listing the project's dependencies. You can use the pip freeze command for this task as seen on screen. You'll use requirements.txt when deploying the project to tell Heroku which packages must be installed to run your application's code. Now the application directory should look as seen on screen. Next, you'll create a small Flask application with a single root, index, that returns the text hello world when requested. To create a Flask application, you have to create a Flask object that represents your app and then associate views to roots. Flask takes care of dispatching incoming requests to the correct view based on the request URL and the routes that you've defined. For small applications, like the one you're working with in this course, you can write all the code in a single file, organizing your project as seen on screen. App.py contains the application's code where you create the app and its views. Create app.py and edit the contents as seen on screen. First, you import Flask. After Flask is imported, 
This code creates the object app, which belongs to the Flask class. The view function index is linked to the main root using the app.root decorator. When the main root is requested, Flask will serve the request by calling index and using its return value as the response. There are different ways in which you can run this application. One of the most straightforward ways to launch a Flask app for local development is using the flask run command from the terminal, as seen on screen. By default, Flask will run the application you defined in app.py on port 5000. While the application is running, go to the address seen on screen using your web browser. You'll see a web page containing the message Hello World, as you see on screen. During development, you'd normally want to reload your application automatically whenever you make a change to it. You can do this by setting an environment variable, flask underscore env, to development. Here's how to do this on macOS and Linux. And here's how to do this on Windows. You can now run Flask again, and you will see that the environment has changed. When you set Flask env to development, Flask will monitor changes to the app files and reload the server whenever there's a change. This way you don't need to manually stop and restart the app server after each modification. In this course, you're going to track the changes to your project's files using Git, a popular version control system. You'll need to install Git, and the method of installation will vary depending on which platform you're running on. Follow the link on screen and install Git for your operating system. Once Git is installed, as a first step, you should create a Git repository for your project. You can achieve this by executing the following command in your project's directory. This command initializes the repository that will be used to track the project's files. The repository metadata is stored in a hidden directory named .git. Note that there are some folders that you shouldn't include in the git repository, such as the virtual environment and pycache. You can tell git to ignore them by creating a file named .gitignore and adding the folders to it, as seen on screen. Next, you'll see the commands on screen that use to add the files to the Git repository. And make a first commit. After running these commands, Git will track changes to your application files, but it will ignore the VMV and PyCache folders. Now the project directory should look as seen on screen. If you want to learn more about Git and hosting your repository on GitHub, then check out this RealPython course. You're now ready to deploy your app using Heroku, and that's what will be covered in the next section of the course. Deploying the application to Heroku. Heroku makes building and deploying applications really friendly for developers. It removes much of the burden related to building and running web applications, taking care of most infrastructure details and letting you focus on creating and improving the app. Some of the details handled by Heroku include provisioning HTTPS certificates, managing DNS records, and running and maintaining servers. In this part of the course, you'll learn how to deploy the previously created web application to the internet using Heroku. By the end of this section, your app will be publicly available under a nice URL and served using HTTPS. Your first step is to create a Heroku account. If you don't have one already, you can use the free and hobby plan. It allows you to deploy non-commercial applications, personal projects and experiments without spending money. Follow the link seen on screen to the Heroku sign-up page and create an account. You'll be able to start using Heroku after completing the required information and confirming your email address. The Heroku command line interface, CLI, is a tool that allows you to create and manage Heroku applications from the terminal. 
It's the quickest and the most convenient way to deploy your application. The installation method for Heroku CLI depends on the operating system you're using, so follow the link on screen and install the Heroku CLI using the instructions that you find there. Once you have the Heroku CLI installed, you'll need to log in. You can do this by running the following command from a terminal. This opens a website with a button to complete the login process. Click login to complete the authentication process and start using the Heroku CLI. After logging in, you're ready to start using the Heroku CLI to manage your applications and workflows. Now you'll learn how to use the Heroku CLI and Git to deploy your web application. The first step is to create a file named procfile in the project's root directory. This file tells Heroku how to run the app. You can create it by running the command seen on screen. Note that this file name must start with a capital letter and the file cannot contain any comments. This file tells Heroku to serve your application using GUnicorn, a Python web server gateway interface WSGI HTTP server, compatible with various web frameworks, including Flask. Next, install GUnicorn. And update the requirements file by using pip. As files have been added and changed, they'll need to be committed to Git. This can be done using the commands seen on screen. Firstly, the latest versions of procfile and requirements.txt are added to the Git repository. And then a commit with an appropriate name is created. You're now ready to deploy the application to Heroku. You'll start by creating a Heroku application using the Heroku CLI. Note that this course uses realpython-flask-app as the application name. This command initializes the Heroku application, creating a Git remote named Heroku. Since application names need to be unique on Heroku, you'll need to choose a different name for your deployment. Next, you can push the Git repository to this remote to trigger the build and deployment process. After pushing the master branch to the Heroku remote, you'll see that the output displays information about the building and deployment process. The output indicates that Python 3.9 will be used at your application's runtime. This was the default version at the time of this course being recorded. Congratulations, the app is now online. The output shows the build process, including the installation of dependencies and the deployment. Towards the bottom, you'll find the URL for your application. In this case, it's realpython flask herokuappcom as seen on screen. The app name is before Heroku app, so now you can see why the app name needs to be unique. You can also use the Heroku open command to open your app's URL. This command will open the application using your default web browser. To learn how you can customize the Python version and other runtime settings, check out Heroku's Python runtime documentation at the link seen on screen. Now let's make a small change to the app and see how you can redeploy it. Edit app.py and modify the string returned by index as seen on screen. Hello world is replaced by hello, this is the new version. This new version can be deployed on Heroku by committing and pushing the changes to the Heroku remote. Firstly, the app file is added. Next, a commit is made. Finally, the changes are pushed to the Heroku remote. This triggers the build and deployment process again. You can repeat these steps whenever you need to deploy a new version of your application. You'll notice that subsequent deployments usually take less time because the requirements are already installed.
For more details about how to use the Heroku CLI to deploy Python applications, follow the link on screen to the Heroku documentation. In the next section of the course, you'll see how to use Heroku pipelines to aid your development workflow.